something to say. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name's Charlie, you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my new book, Crucify My Love, or my sort of new book, The Chain, which is over on Wattpad, as I'm doing the edits and revisions on it. Today, we are going to be doing something that I thought might be terrifying, but fun. Okay, so I've seen a lot of people doing these lately, and I thought I would do my own writer confessions. Things you're not supposed to say in public, things you're not supposed to say out loud, things you're supposed to pretend aren't there. This should be beneficial to both writers and readers and, well, anybody who likes reading creative work or encountering creative work. But before we go into all that, if you haven't already, please rate this podcast. It really does help out. It tells the algorithms to share the podcast with more people. The more people, the better chance we have of building a community. The bigger the community, the more chance we have of interaction. And that's why I do this in the first place. Because Lord knows it's not about the money. And the same thing is true about writing. Okay, so hi. This is going to be a vulnerable episode. So here we go. Let's try to do this. Number one, no writer knows what they're doing. Now, I don't mean in regard to, say, the craft or storytelling or any of those things. That's our purpose. That's the main thing we study over and over and over again so that we can get those things right. What I mean is we don't know how to get people to read our stuff. We don't know how to make money. We don't know how to build an audience. We don't know how to build a platform. We don't know how to do anything like that. And I know what you're saying. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Okay. But there's this podcast or this YouTuber that I follow that tells me everything that I need to know about how to market my book or sell my book or build an audience or build platform. And they're brilliant because they've built a platform and they sell books. Yeah, maybe. The dirty little secret is most writers don't share how many books they actually sell. Um, and that's why you should take any advice that you get about how to sell a book, how to market a book, how to get word out about a book. You should take it with a grain of salt because they may know what they're talking about, but more than likely they've built a platform doing something completely different and then leveraged that to get their book sales. So their actual book sale techniques may or may not be what sold the books in the first place. And you can't get over the fact that algorithms choose things for variant reasons. And there's always the fairy dust. Ruby dust comes and goes and nobody knows from whence it arrives. We don't know. We try things. We tell people we have a new book out. We buy ads. We do all kinds of crazy things to try to get people to know that we have a book and to buy our books. But honestly, we don't know what we're doing. And while, yes, there are some people that feel that they have cracked a formula or cracked the code. uh, (laughs) When you really get into deep rooted conversations with them, they usually don't know And will admit that they don't know. They just have seen that this kind of sometimes works. And that kind of sometimes works. And so they continue doing those things. 
And for people like me who are living in the great realm of frustration, yeah, we, we, we try things. We try things all the time. And so, yeah, that's, that's the first confession. We don't know what we're doing as far as business is concerned. And I think you should be very wary of any writer who tells you that they do, mainly because the techniques that they used for their success probably won't map over for you or anybody else. The world is fickle like that. <sighs> Number two, I shouldn't write about gay people as much as I do. I really shouldn't. If I wanted to sell books, one of the few things I can tell you 100% is that if I didn't write as much about queer characters, be they of a non-heterosexual sexuality, or if they were just cisgendered all the time, I would definitely sell more books. Because genres are ghettoized terribly, as are events. Just looking at the current numbers for um, Crucify My Love, which is out right now, it is ranked in three different categories, three different genres right now. LBGT fantasy fiction, LGBT fantasy, and dark fantasy horror. And yeah, can you guess which the lowest number is? Yeah, it's dark fantasy horror. If... I were a smart person and only cared about making money, then yeah, definitely I would not be trying to put out the word about all these queer characters that I write. The main characters in my book would be cisgendered, heterosexual, more than likely men because I write fantasy and fantasy heroes sell better when they're men, because that's a thing in our world. But, you know, that's not what I do, and that's not what I want to do. And so by actually being open about my own gender and sexuality, which, by the way, that's going to be number three, but by allowing that to influence the characters that I write... I really do handicap the types of books that I sell. See, when my very first book came out, the main character was gay, and the editor that I worked with convinced me to change that, and that book sold pretty well. Um, the follow-up book to that sold even better, and it also had exclusively cisgendered heterosexual characters in it, primarily male. My third book had a gay lead character, and it's old okay, but not as well. And I know what you're saying. Well, that's just the fickleness of the market. The third book may not have been as good as the others. Hmm, probably not. I think the third book was one of the better ones that I had written for quite some time, but that's not the point. The third book, when it came out, got flagged for being pornographic because it had gay characters in it. There's not even a sex scene in the book, but it got flagged as being pornography because there are people that hunt for gay books and do that. And so I had to fight to get it back on Amazon because... They claim they don't sell pornography. That's a topic for a whole different show. And eventually it got reinstated, but, you know, that really hurt the book's ability to sell because, you know, if you're not in the place where the majority of people buy their books, well, you're not going to sell books. And of course, when it came back, it was classified into the LGBT categories, which they created around that time. And so its sales are tracked on those charts because, you know, cisgendered straight people 
definitely don't want to be reading books with queer characters in it. This led to the rage that caused me to write the original version of The Chain, which I'm currently rewriting and revising right now, because I think I can do better. And The Chain sold okay, but not as well as others. And I'm not complaining. It's not that I'm such a great writer, I should have a huge audience or anything like that. It's just a reality that people need to bear in mind when they're being honest about the characters that they want to write. Whether the market is there or not, the companies, the gatekeepers that control how people find the books, and by that I mean mostly Amazon, will put you in over into the LGBT categories so that the mainstream doesn't find you as easily. It's just a fact. It's a sad one, but a true one. Number three. I would probably sell more books if I wasn't as open about my gender and sexuality. Now, I know what you're saying, and I actually hear this from some people, then you should just stop talking about it, but it's an integral part of who I am, and to expect me not to talk about my husband is crazy. To expect me not to talk about my life is crazy. This is the modern world, after all, and... Yeah, I guess I could operate an additional Twitter account that's about me as a writer and another one that's about me as a person and be very strict about what goes where and how all that gets broken down. But yeah, that's not me. <laughs> that's not the person I want to be. That's not the life I want to live. I, I want to be honest. I lived in multiple closets throughout my life. And I'm out now, and I don't want to go back in, not even if it means that I can make more money. But it does have an impact, it does have an effect, when a particular convention that I do events for found out that I was queer, um, I have yet to be reinstated on the author track, and I'm okay with that, I guess. I'm not like 100% thrilled by it, but eh, okay. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to really throw up my fists and argue because it's not worth my time. I'll just do what I can do and have fun doing it. But it does factor in and it's something that people have to think about. And I think the biggest thing that everybody needs to know is that writing is not something you should do if your goal is making money. I'm not saying that it's impossible to make money as a writer. I'd never say that. But I think we need to start being honest, especially with a lot of the newer people that are coming in, because I see a lot of younger authors and newer authors struggling with this idea that somehow the quality of their book is tied up in the quality, the amount of money that they make. While... Yes, that can be true, while that can be, you know, helpful to understand that people will buy your book if they like it. People have to find your book. People have to know that you're there. People have to care enough and be convinced to take a chance on a writer that they've never read before. So the mere fact that your book only sold X number of copies really doesn't tell you anything about its quality or whether or not people actually like it. For the number of books that I've sold, there's a shocking lack of ratings and reviews on them. For the number of podcasts that I've done and the number of people that I know have listened, there's a lot of, very few ratings and reviews. Because people don't often take the time to do that. Be and that's a problem for us as creative people. The lack of reviews, the lack of conversation organic conversation around our work really does stifle its ability to be successful, to make money, if that's what your view of success is. And I don't think we're honest enough with new people coming in, or for people who are thinking about taking this up as a profession. Writing is a vocation. It's a calling. 
It's something that we do because we have a story or many stories that we just have to tell. And we can't imagine not telling them. Yes, I want to make money off my books. Yes, I want to make a living off of my books. That would be wonderful. I'd like to make a living off the podcasts and everything that I do. But we can't get so wrapped up in this idea that money equals quality or money equals success. We really have to have other metrics by which we can judge our work. You know, I've been frustrated over the years with the fact that, you know, my work isn't as widely known or circulated as I would like it to be. And that's vanity. I mean, that's pure vanity. But at a convention about a year or two ago, I had a girl come up to me and explain to me how my books affected her life and how they really helped her get through some hard times and how they helped her reconnect with her estranged sister. And I, I can't think of anything better than that. Yeah, that's only a couple books sold. Yeah. That's not going to make me rich or famous or anything. But the just the idea that anything that I put out into the world helped sisters reconnect with each other. I mean, you can hear it. I'm getting a little misty. I'm just thinking about it. And we talked for a very long time about it because... I was sure that she was misattributing it. it. It wasn't the books. And she was like, no, she met you at this convention previous year, bought your books, was really excited about them. And I bought them too, so that we could talk about them because we really didn't have much to talk about together. And they became something that we could talk about and build a foundation for a relationship on. And that really changed my perspective on writing because yeah, you want the bigger audience. You want people telling you that they like your books. You want to be able to talk about the nuances and the little things with people. At least I do. But the idea that my books could help people was never really something that I had considered or thought about. I'm not saying that you should make that your goal, but honestly, if we're writing, if we're telling stories that we really mean, that we really care about, that really mean something to us, the idea that it would affect someone in a positive way, that it would really be meaningful to someone else, shouldn't be a surprise. And in many ways, whether we ever find out about it or not, should be the goal. I write stories that affect me emotionally or cognitively in some way. Stories that I need to hear. Stories I'm looking for but can't find other places. Other people are looking for those stories too. And those are the ones that you should be telling. Those are the ones that you should be looking for. The ones that mean something, that resonate to you and to others. And they're the ones that you should be sharing. You know, I've said it a lot that Crucify My Love is a book that I will forever love because it changed me in writing it. And it did. And whether or not it ever has that effect on other people or not isn't the point to me anymore. The point is how much touched me writing that book and the fact that I can share it with the world and hopefully it can go out there and help others. That's really what I'm doing this for. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not marketing the books anymore or trying to actually make a living off of them, but my perspective has changed as to what it is that I'm actually doing here. That's why I always say that it's about building community for me. And yeah, the money's nice, but it's about the community. So do that for yourself. Give yourself 
goals that are beyond just the money. Because, yeah, the money's nice. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't want it or shouldn't try to get it. And I'm not saying that you should give up on your dreams of being self-sustaining as a writer. But we need to be honest with ourselves. And we need to be honest with everyone else. Our support comes from our audience. And it's really hard to find one of those. I hope you enjoyed this really honest episode. I thought it would be fun and it's oddly freeing to talk about these things. Before we go, I'd like to let you know that my new podcast, Banned from Argo, is now available on um, Anchor, Spotify, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, and Breaker. Or is that Breaker? I think it's Breaker. Breaker. I will let you know as it gets to more places. It takes some time for the systems to catalog and make the podcast available. It is a show exclusively about Star Trek. And the second episode should be out Wednesday. And then it'll be on Wednesdays after that. So yeah, thank you for listening. If you haven't already, please take a moment to rate this podcast wherever you're listening. It really does help. It tells the algorithms to share me with more people. And we just talked about why that's important. Um, if you have a buck you can throw my way, down in the show notes you'll find a link for both my Patreon and the community support page. The difference between the two is that the people on Patreon occasionally get stuff. If you don't have the money, and if you do and you give, please know how much you mean to me. You really do make everything that I do possible. Money is really tight right now. If you don't have the money, you don't feel like giving, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I have come to peace a long time ago that you know I do this for the community and because I love it. But if you know anybody that you think would like this podcast, please do share it with them. That helps out a lot, too. I am going to be in Maryland ne next weekend. I believe it's next weekend. At the Shore Leave Convention, which is in Hunt Valley, Maryland, which is just north of Baltimore. It will be I will be there from July 12th to 14th. They've got a lot of actors and stuff going to be there. A lot of writers are going to be there. Um, if you can make it, I would love to meet you. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do any like scheduled meetups, but I'm not hard to find at these conventions and I'll probably be running the LGBT tract for this one. Like I usually do. Um, if you can make it, I'd love to see you there. Um, you can find links to everything that I do over at projectshadow.com. And don't forget, you can always leave me a voice message through the link in the sh show notes. Or you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. I'm C. Dorset on both. Until next time, don't forget to have the fun. Bye.